In this video, we're going to introduce the two classes of stereoisomers. Keep in mind that stereoisomers have the same bonds, the same connections between atoms, but those bonds are oriented differently in three-dimensional space. This gives rise to different chemical and physical properties in some cases, although because they have the same bonds, stereoisomers are chemically similar to each other, I would say. They engage in many of the same types of reactions, for example, but they may react at different rates. There are two classes of stereoisomers, diastereomers and enantiomers. And the two classes differ in whether or not the two molecules in question, the molecules that we're comparing, are mere images of each other or not. Stereoisomers that are not mere images are known as diastereomers. Stereoisomers that are mere images are called enantiomers. And enantiomers are about as similar as two molecules can get without being identical. And enantiomers have very similar properties but do differ from each other in important ways that you'll primarily explore when you get to your organic chemistry courses. But we want to introduce these concepts here because coordination complexes can exhibit diastereomerism and enantiomerism can have these relationships between related molecules of being diastereomers or being enantiomers. When it comes to diastereomers, cis-trans or geometric isomerism is one of the most common types of diastereomeric relationship that we see. And the idea of cis-trans isomerism is that cis and trans isomers differ in the relative positions of two ligands about the metal center. And in differing in this way, the two isomers cannot possibly be mirror images, as we'll see, because there is a different internal distance or internal bond angle between the two ligands um, whose positions differ between the cis and trans isomers. So this is a kind of diastereomerism since cis and trans isomers are always diastereomers. A classic example of cis-trans isomerism is shown at the center of this slide with these dichloride complexes. This um, complex on the left has the two chlorines relatively close to one another. This is a cis relationship here. On the other hand, in the complex on the right, we've got the two chlorines relatively far from each other. This is called a trans relationship. Cis evokes the idea that the two chlorine or chloride ligands are relatively close to each other, 90 degree bond angle. Trans evokes the idea that they're relatively far apart from each other. Here this bond angle is 180 degrees. So this spatial difference does give rise to differences in chemical and physical properties. For example, the cis isomer here is a violet color. The trans isomer is a green color and having made both of these complexes, I can tell you that if you prepare the cis isomer and just let it sit, it will turn green over time. A um, little bit slower at low temperature, but the trans isomer is more stable than the cis isomer due to the larger distance between the chlori chloride ligands. And so there is an interconversion of the cis to the trans spontaneously over time, indicating that they have different stabilities, right? Different physical properties and vastly different colors. The cis isomer is a beautiful violet color, the trans isomer a green color. Now enantiomers are different. Enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images of each other and they are inequivalent or non-superimposable mirror images. If we want to compare two molecules and make sure that they are identical, they correspond to the same compound, we should be able to perfectly superimpose all of their atoms and bonds, right? Perfectly overlay them so that all of the atoms and bonds line up exactly. You can't do that with enantiomers, that's what makes them isomers, and what's unique to enantiomers is that the stereoisomers are mirror images of each other. In other words, if you held one isomer up to a mirror, what you would see in the reflection would be the enantiomer, the mirror image of that molecule that you're holding in your hand. And to introduce this concept, it helps to realize that you're walking around with a pair of enantiomers attached to your body in your two hands, right? Your enantiomers, uh, your, your hands have the same fingers connected in the same way, right? The thumb first, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky but they're not the same. They can't be perfectly overlaid. The difference between them is spatial. One is the mirror image of the other, right? Your right hand is the mirror image of your left hand 
and vice versa. So your hands are enantiomers. They are not the same. They're mirror images of each other. And so they are stereoisomeric and enantiomeric. Molecules, of course, can have this same property. And two examples of enantiomers are shown in the middle of this slide. These diethylene, diamine, dichloride complexes of cobalt. So the first thing I want to point out here is that if we imagined putting a mirror between these two molecules, we'd see that the molecule on the right is the mirror image of the molecule on the left. And I actually encourage you to pause and really think through this, looking carefully at the ethylene diamine ligands. For example, if I reflected this ethylene diamine through the mirror, well, I would get this ethylene diamine by sort of sending all the atoms onto that mirror plane and then projecting them out to the other side at an equal distance. Likewise, if I were to reflect this chloride ligand through the mirror, I'd get this chloride ligand. And this chloride ligand pointed towards the back, reflected through this mirror, which is perpendicular to the screen, would lead to this chloride ligand. And you can look in detail at all of the ligands and the cobalt center to verify that these molecules are mirror images of each other. Where this gets a little tricky is verifying that these are not the same. These are not actually perfectly superimposable. If you tried, for example, to turn over this molecule to line up these two ethylene diamine ligands, that would lead to the chlorides not lining up properly or the other ethylene diamine ligand not lining up properly. And the three-dimensional um, image here, this three-dimensional image of the complex may help with this. We'll see in a little bit that lacking an internal plane of symmetry is a good way to tell that a molecule has an enantiomer and this molecule lacks an internal plane of symmetry. You can actually see that if you look at the symmetry operations on the right hand side, no reflection plane in there. This molecule doesn't have an internal plane through which we could reflect its atoms that leads to the exact same structure. This indicates that it is not the same as its mirror image. And again, to relate this back to the idea of your hands and your body as a whole, the reason your body as a whole looks the same in a mirror versus in reality at least theoretically speaking, is that you are symmetric. You've got a plane of symmetry that runs right down the middle of your body, right? That bisects your nose, bisects your chest, all the way on down, right? And because you have that, you are identical to your mirror image. Your hands individually do not have a plane of symmetry internal to themselves. And so these are not the same as their mirror images, and each one has an enantiomer, and they are the enantiomers of each other because they are mirror images. So enantiomers are an equivalent mirror images, mirror image molecules that cannot be perfectly superimposed on one another.